Hi, everyone. I'm volcanologist Dr. Janine Krupner, and this is my guest. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Callan Bentley. I teach geology at Northern Virginia Community College. Thank you so much for joining me. So with us being in the DC, Virginia area, people don't often think about volcanoes, but a very long time ago, this was a much different place. So can you tell us a bit about what volcanism was like and when it was in this area? Absolutely. So there are four answers to that question because there have been four major episodes of volcanism that have affected the Mid-Atlantic region. And these uh, started with the Neo-Proterozoic aged breakup of an ancient supercontinent called Rodinia. So a lot of people are familiar with Pangaea as a supercontinent, but Pangaea was not the first supercontinent. Its immediate predecessor was one called Rodinia. So Rodinia got put together from various continental land masses around a billion years ago. And then around 570 million years ago, Rodinia broke apart, opening up a new ocean basin. But that process of breaking up a continent results in thinning of the crust, which allows the uh, shallow mantle to decompress and melt. And so that's happening today in East Africa, giving us volcanoes like Kilimanjaro and Mount Kenya. That happened in Virginia around 570, 565 million years ago. And there were huge floods of lava, of basaltic lava that oozed out over this, uh, this wound where the two pieces of continent were separating. And that is preserved today in a volcanic rock formation called the Catoctin Formation. It's named for Catoctin Mountain, which is a mountain in Maryland. Uh, a famous thing about Catoctin Mountain is that the presidential retreat, Camp David, is located on that mountain. And that mountain is made out of these ancient basalt flows. These basalt flows have primary volcanic structures preserved in them. So some of the most spectacular ones are examples of columnar jointing where the lava has cooled and contracted and made cooling columns like you see at the Giant's Causeway or Devil's Tower in Wyoming. We have those preserved in places like Shenandoah National Park. I have a couple of samples here with me today that show another primary volcanic structure, and that is volcanic gas bubbles. So these are amygdules, uh, and these are filled in volcanic gas bubbles that are preserved as sort of a Swiss cheese polka dot kind of texture that runs through the rock. So here's a polished example here. And so each of those little concentrically zoned spots that you see is a spot where there used to be a volcanic gas bubble. And then much, much later, that got preserved with, with mineral deposits. So that's the oldest of our volcanoes on the East Coast. It's Neo-Proterozoic in age, and, um, and that means around 565, 570 million years old. The next major episode of volcanism um, resulted from the opposite, tectonic circumstance. And that's when this new ocean basin that opened up began to close again. And as it closed, subduction caused the development of a volcanic island arc. That volcanic island arc had volcanoes, and those volcanoes spewed ash into the air. Spewed, you really like that, that uh, <laughs> verb, right? Um, I'll, I'll allow it. <laughs> All right. Um, so these, uh, these ash deposits drifted on the winds and they were deposited um, in layers of sedimentary rock in our Valley and Ridge province. And so you have layers of like limestone and then volcanic ash and more limestone. And um, those deposits are really important because they allow us to date those sedimentary formations in which they occur. And they tell us basically about the timing of the closure of that ancient ocean. That's, um, uh, has something that happened in the late Ordovician period of geologic time, so around 460 million years ago. The eventual closure of that ocean made another supercontinent, Pangaea, and Pangaea lasted for a while, and then it broke apart. And just like with the breakup of Rodinia, we saw thinning of the crust, which decompressed the mantle, and that allowed mafic volcanism. And so there's a series of ancient rift valleys that run up and down the East Coast, and in the D.C. region, the largest of those is called the Culpeper Basin. It's where Dulles Airport is located, sort of between Leesburg, Virginia and Reston, Virginia. There's an ancient rift valley, and that rift valley is filled in with immature sediments, conglomerates and arcos and, and lake deposits, but also mafic volcanic rocks, including basalt 
and a um, sort of a basalt that never quite made it to the surface, which is called diabase. And so those are Triassic aged uh, igneous rocks. They're around 200 to 180 million years old, and they represent the death of Pangaea and the birth of the Atlantic Ocean. And you think the story might end there because the Atlantic hasn't started to close that again, but there's actually a, a really weird oddball volcanic suite in Virginia and adjacent West Virginia that is really young. The youngest volcanics anywhere on the East Coast are Eocene in age, and they're around 47 million years old. And it's a series of dikes and other intrusions, and then one big volcanic neck just outside of Harrisonburg, Virginia, um, where it pokes up above the town where James Madison University is. And that hill is called Mole Hill. And Mole Hill is an Eocene age volcanic neck it has xenoliths in the basalt there that include many of the local uh, surrounding sedimentary rocks. And those are our youngest uh, volcanic rocks anywhere on the East Coast. And that ends the sort of volcanological story of the mid-Atlantic region. Wow, <laughs> that's a lot. So for, for reference, so, um, I study active volcanism and the oldest rocks I've studied were erupted in 1954. So a couple of decades ago. <laughs> So we're looking at very different rocks that have been sitting there for millions of years. So if anyone's in the region, you can go out and explore those and maybe find them. Yeah. So, but the beauty is that they were not formed through some radically different process, right? We can look at rocks that uh, erupted out of volcanoes in the 1950s or the 1990s or last week. And they're basically playing by the same set of rules as were volcanoes hundreds of millions of years ago. Absolutely. You know, we say in geology, the key to the, what is it? I always get it mixed up. The key to the past is the present or the other way around. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Both yes. really. The present is the key to the past and uh, <laughs> and the present is the key to the future too. So yeah, we, we can um, basically move through time forwards and backwards on our basic understanding of these geologic principles. Thank you so much. That's really fascinating. And I just learned something about my own area where I'm living in. So thank Great. you well, so much for, for joining me. My pleasure. Bye. All right. Take care. Stay safe. You too.